Hi, we're here with Data Intensity to talk about a very efficient way to move on-premise workloads to OCI. So let's get started. Welcome. I'm really excited to see you today and understand what you're doing with OCI. I've heard wonderful things about the architecture that you're, you've developed. So I guess I'd love to start with you describing the workloads that you're using on OCI. Thanks, Brian. I'm also excited to be here today. So the OCI workloads, we developed out the architecture, and this was for a customer who were on a private cloud and migrating to OCI. And that private cloud was shutting down, so they had a deadline that they have to migrate before end of this year. So let's talk a little bit about what services you're using and what the applications are with those services. Right. So for this customer, they are Oracle eBusiness Suite. All right. The 11204 database. Yep. And they also have Hyperion and OBIE. Yes. Um, so that's a primary workload. Then they have some supporting uh, systems uh, that also will be migrated to OCI. So how did you decide, you know, sizing? Because you have flexibility now, right? As opposed to buying a big piece of hardware and just putting everything there on there, you have flexibility. So how did you kind of architect what the right, you know, configuration is? We have a program called DCOT, a total cost of optimization transformation. This, I mean, it has two parts. One is the, the, the license footprint is where we manage and optimize Oracle license use. We advise customers what they are using. We advise them what their effective license position and then uh, what they are using. So that is one piece. Then we also look at uh, the workload analysis where we look at the AWR data for databases or the host uh, SAR data uh, for the host VMs. And then we size the architecture or size the VMs for the cloud based on their workload, the current workload. So uh, even though we call it lift and shift, like we do analyze and we are not mapping, okay, you are running 24 CPUs, let's uh, allocate 24 CPUs in OCI, not that. And we are allocating what is needed, uh, what we think is needed, right. uh, because it's based on the data. So you have a bunch of nodes running eBusiness Suite. Yes. You have some running Hyperion. How did you architect that in OCI with, you know, to take into consideration fault domains, availability domain? Primarily, I mean, we, we separate uh, the production workload and the non-production workload in two VCNs. And then we have a, another VCN in the DR region, similar. There's only one VCN for the right. disaster recovery. Then within each VCN, we have multiple subnets. So we separate uh, the, the database subnet, the application server subnet, and we also separate eBusiness Suite and Hyperion and OBIE and the other servers and ancillary servers, they are separate. So that's the, the, the high level architecture. And we also have something called in our architecture diagram, you can see that there's a, a VCN there called Hub VCN. I, I was really curious. I wanted to ask you why that was. <laughs> yeah, so it, it's something to show the customer that there is flexibility there. And if they want to use a third party firewall like Palo Alto or something like that, we will put those components in that up this year and, and it'll be separated. So you're planning there. ahead? Yeah, planning ahead. What about the DR area? Is it set up exactly the same? Do you make any changes? It matches the production side. Okay. And so the networking or the subnet the architecture is similar. The configuration is similar, right? And, and it makes it easier. Excellent. And, and how do you keep them in sync? We use DataGuard for okay. Oracle database and pretty much straight rsync uh, for uh, the application server. So the rsync, I believe it runs like every hour or so. How are you architecting for failover? We use load balancers for the application servers. Then on the database side, we use DataGuard, basically build a standby database to reduce the cutover time. So we had a, a standby running on OCI uh, on a VM and syncing from uh, the production database. So at the time of cutover, I mean, we shut down the production database and we made sure that everything is synced. Then we break that the standby and then bring up the services on production side. All right, so that that's the production side, DR. You mentioned dev, test, QA in the same region as that's your correct. production. Correct. How is that? configured in relationship to the production sizing and 
How do you keep them in sync? They are um, obviously sized much smaller than than production. I mean, since they are not running any any major projects or any upgrade, nothing is happening. So uh, we looked at the again uh, the same uh, analysis we did for production. We did the same analysis on the non-prod servers, and wherever possible, uh, there is some consolidation uh, because earlier they used to have. I uh, believe uh, for eBusiness Suite, they had uh, three non-production databases um, because I, they, I think they had six or seven non-production environments. We consolidated that into like two non-production servers and more databases on there. Um, so things like that. I mean, so they, yeah. but they are they are low profile. The major workload will be uh, the backups probably and some uh, gather schema stats or something like that, which right. uh, the eBusiness Suite, they are on cloud. But otherwise, I mean, they are pretty small. So can you talk a little bit about how you're connecting to the other sources from a networking perspective. Or are you using Fast Connect? We use Fast Connect. For this customer, they implemented Fast Connect only on the production side or where okay. the production and non-production is. The DR side is still uh, IPsec. So what would you do differently from an architecture perspective? We have options in OCI where we want to add on cloud native services like the, the, the Cloud Guard, the Data Safe. They all work with the, the database and the versions and or the stack monitoring, things like that. We want to enhance and then utilize that. And that's uh, at least helping on the on the support side. So where to next? No, they are on OCI. At mm-hmm. least the hardware and the platform right. is is there. Uh, now they have to migrate to cloud ERP and 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 SaaS platform is where they want to move. But many of our customers, I mean, once they migrate to um, OCI, uh, they want to upgrade uh, to the latest and greatest. So all the things that go around that are cloud observability, right. observability and manageability, those kind of services, yeah. leverage them to just manage everything right. more efficiently. More efficiently, exactly. So even though that, that restriction, that uh, application sure. version is there, I mean, it just sits in the middle and everything else is like, okay, newer technology, I mean, newer, uh, newer products. Right. But it, in reality, from my perspective, looking at how you've architected this in OCI, there's no difference from a lot of other applications that are using VMs. You just yeah. have EBS in there right? and IPering as opposed to another third-party application or a custom-built application. Exactly. It's still, on, you know, from an OCI perspective, a fundamental compute and memory. Exactly. And, and we are using all the, the OCI or cloud best practices. I mean, we are separating production, non-production yes. applications, I mean, different fault domains, uh, different VCNs. Because we use all the best practices in the architecture. Uh, it just... The migration is different, that's all. I'm really interested and excited about just this, the concept of running unsupported software, migrating it to OCI, and getting benefits out of it. We modernized in everything around it, right? Uh, but the, the customer doesn't see that. But everything else is, is better. It's better performing. And the, the, the backups and those things are different, right? And now you can write backups to object storage directly. Sure. And then we also have tiering or... or the, the life cycle uh, of the backups, right? I mean, after 30 days, it rolls over to an archive storage or whatever that is. And that is, that's all set up. So it's all automated and it's all set up. Well, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Enjoyed it. Thank you.